angles and triangles. How many triangles can be made if one angle has a measure of 98 degrees and another angle is obtuse? In this question, we're only given information about two out of three angles of the triangle. But let's take a look at all three angles of the triangle and see if we can't figure out some information that'll help us answer this question. So the three angles of a triangle will always have the same sum no matter the shape or size of the triangle. And when you add these angle measures together, so measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three, the sum will always be 180 degrees. Always. It will never be any less. It will never be any larger. It will always be 180 degrees. So now let's look at this question. If we know that one angle measures 98 degrees and another is obtuse, hmm, obtuse. Think about what obtuse means. Obtuse means that the measure of the angle is more than 90, right? So if you think of a 90 degree angle like an L, right, then obtuse is widening that angle, right? It's making it bigger. So the smallest obtuse angle, that's a whole number that I can think of, would be 91, right? So let's say that one angle is 98 and let's say that the other angle is 91. If I add just those two angles together, I get what? 189. That is clearly bigger than 180. Even if it was a 98 degree angle and a right angle, it would still be 188. It would still be too large. Think about what this would look like. If my base of my triangle is here, and I have one angle that's, let's say, 98 degrees here, so maybe something that looks like that. And I have another angle on this side that's also obtuse, also greater than 90, even if it's just barely greater than 90. Are those two sides ever going to come together to touch to form a triangle? No way, right? We've already exceeded the number of degrees for the three angles of a triangle just with the first two angles. So how many triangles can be made from these two angles? Zero. None. You can't make one because we've already exceeded the 180 degree limit for the sum of the angles of a triangle. Okay, find the measure of angle two in the figure below. Hmm, okay. So I see that angle two is in a triangle with an angle that's 38 degrees and an angle that's y degrees. That doesn't really help me, right? I don't know what y is. I haven't found that variable yet. It's an unknown. So let me look at the other triangle. I've got angle one, then I've got a 19 degree angle and a 41 degree angle. So I know that these three angles have to add up to 180. So if I add the two angles that I've got, 19 plus 41, 19 plus 41 gives me 60, right? And I know that the three angles have to add up to be 180. So I know that the angles that I've got plus the angle that I'm missing, let's put measure angle one, is equal to 180 degrees. So to find the measure of angle one, I'm going to do 180 minus 60. So the measure of angle one is 120 degrees. But I'm not asked for the measure of angle one, am I? <laughs> I'm asked for the measure of angle two. Now, angle one and angle two are a special pair of angles. 
these two angles are called vertical angles. And you can kind of remember that name because when two lines cross, you get a V this way and a V that way, and V for vertical. So angle one and angle two are vertical angles. That means that they're always congruent. So if angle one is 120 degrees, then dun, 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 so is angle two. And then we're done with that one. All right, so we used two properties here. We used the fact that all three angles add up to 180 in a triangle. And we also used the property that vertical angles are congruent. Can a triangle be formed with, a, with side lengths of 6 inches, 8 inches, and 13 inches? Okay, so let's experiment for just a minute here. Let's say this is the base of my triangle, right? And I have this side is going to be one of the other sides of the triangle. And this is going to be one of the other sides of the triangle. I'm going to attach this side right here. And I'm going to attach this side right here. And then I'm going to open them up to open up into my triangle. But you can probably picture what that's going to look like, right? These two little short sides are going to come up but they're not long enough to connect, right? So if the two sides, the two shorter sides added together, right, their length together is still shorter than the third side, we can't make a triangle. What if they're equal? So what if I make this one longer and I make this one longer? And now when I add up the other two sides, now it's the same as the third side. Okay, so that looks better. But now when I start to open those sides up and to form a triangle, they're not going to touch at the top, right? I can't get a triangle from that. So even if the sum of the two smaller sides is equal to the third side, it's still not going to give you a triangle. The only way you're going to be able to actually open it up is if they overlap, right? Like that. So then when you open it up, they'll touch. And the only way that's going to happen is when the two shorter sides added together are longer than the third side. So let's see if that's the case here. Six inches and eight inches are my two short sides. 13 is the longest one. 6 plus 8 is 14 inches. That is greater than 13 inches. So, yes, I can form a triangle with these given side lengths because the two smaller side lengths have a sum that's larger than the third side. All right, it's my favorite type of problem. So in the figure below, angles X and Y are vertical angles. We know what that means. Angle X forms a straight line with the 50 and 65 degree angles. Okay, let's talk about what that means. Angle X forms a straight line with the 50 and 65 degree angles. So we've got, this is a straight line. How many degrees is a straight line? 180, right, 180 degrees. Write and solve an equation to determine the value of angle y. Now, from the beginning, x and y are vertical angles. So we know that that means whatever x is, y equals the same thing, right? That's step number one. We know that x and y equal the same number, the same angle measure. So, whatever equation I can write with x, I could also write it with y instead. So, I know that these three angles where I drew this little blue arc, they're all equal when I add them up to 180 because when I put them together, I get a straight line. So, I can write an equation. 65 plus 50 plus x must equal 180 right? Because those three angles, we were told, form a straight line, which means they add up to 180. 
Now, we also know that x is equal to y. So if I need an equation to find the value of y, I could change this to 65 plus 50 plus y equals 180, right? Same thing, they're equivalent, so I can replace one with the other, it's called substitution. So now I combine like terms, 65 plus 50 gives me 115, and then to find y, I would subtract 115 from both sides, right? Then that would give me 65. So the value of angle y is 65 degrees.